It is the year 2009. The future. The rich no longer die. Rather, their minds are stored on a program called the Spiritual Switchboard, while bonejackers steal their bodies from the past so that they can live again. Enter race car driver Alex Furlong, played by Emilio Estevez, who's stolen from the moment of his fatal accident to be used as a vessel by a mysterious client. But when he's awoken during the transfer, Alex escapes into the hellish future world only to be pursued by the bonejackers leader, Vicendic, played by Mick Jagger, with only his former lover, Julie, played by Rene Russo, willing to help him escape their clutches. Oh yes, this week we're talking about Free Jack from 1992. Okay. Let's do it. Are we really going to do this? Stranger things have happened. Now come on, buckle up. Now, Free Jack was something of a tortured production for Morgan Creek, a studio that was then riding high off the success of Robin Hood Prince of Thieves. Boasting a solid $30 million budget, Free Jack not only had Emilio Estevez fresh off of Young Guns 2 in the lead, but also Anthony Hopkins in what would be his first post Silence of the Lambs role, plus rising star Rene Russo, and best of all, Rolling Stones frontman Mick Jagger in his first acting performance in many, many years. Get the meat. Certainly the studio had high hopes, but initial test screenings went poorly and the film was largely reshot. So much that the director, Jeff Murray, was tempted to take his name off the finished project. All the reshoots were for nothing as the film tanked badly at the box office, making only $17 million. It certainly wasn't helped by all the bad mouthing that the stars did about the movie. I was assured the whole thing would go very smoothly. Anthony Hopkins himself called the film terrible, while in an interview at the time, Estevez said Murphy had let them all down by focusing too much on the action. <laughs> and what did Mick Jagger think? Well, see for yourselves. Right now I'm working on a solo album project, and just before that started, they said, we would like to do this feature, and I said, let me see it. So they said, well, I've got to know, we've got to know by next week, because it starts shooting in three weeks. So I said, okay, I'll do it. So probably if I had six months to think about it, I probably would have turned it down and said, oh no, it's not quite the one I want. Now, I vividly remember the first time I saw the trailer for Free Jack in theaters. I was watching Star Trek VI The Undiscovered Country with my father in theaters. I was only nine years old and the trailer for this one blew my mind. Dad, I want to see this, I said to him. He promised to take me, but alas, the movie was closed before he could ever make good on this promise. Suffice to say, I saw it on VHS a few months later and loved this futuristic action adventure. I'd say it was one of the movies that I probably watched the most as a child, so it always surprised me as an adult that the consensus out there seemed to be that this was not actually a good movie, and in fact, Jesse Shade even did an awfully good on it. That said, it was with some trepidation that I went back to re-watch the film because I just didn't think it would hold up, but to my surprise, I still really enjoyed it. For the life of me, I don't get why people think Free Jack is a bad movie. For one thing, it has a really cool premise, the rich stealing the bodies of the dead from the past. Granted, there is something hilarious about the fact that this dank, depressing future world where bodies can be stolen from the past is only 2009, but hey, if you can let that go, this is a whole lot of fun. It's based on a novel called Immortality Incorporated by Robert Sheckley, and Free Jack boasts a myriad of writers, including Dan Gilroy, who would later go on to write and direct Nightcrawler, and who met his future wife, Rene Russo, on the set of this movie. What a lucky guy. There are a lot of great character actor bits here with an impressive cast of off-kilter supporting players putting in appearances, from Amanda Plummer as a crotch-kicking, ass-kicking nun. Good Lord says to turn the other cheek. <laughs> to a somewhat younger looking Jonathan Banks, who I still think looks a lot like, you know, Cartel Mike. And tell me, how would you feel if you'd been dead for a day and a half and somebody brought you more bad news? There's also Frankie Faison of The Wire and former New York Dolls frontman David Johansson. The hell am I swilling this puke blood? But what anchors the film for me are the four leads. Estevez was really on a roll in the early 90s, and I always found him to be an affable leading man in movies like this and Judgment Night, which I covered on Best Movie Never Saw Before. He's an easy guy to root for. I mean, he's kind of small, he's not super muscular, there's something kind of underdog about him. He's a little bit like a more macho Michael J. Fox. He's photogenic, he's telegenic, and he's real good to his mom. Is that a face that'll sell motor oil or what? But the ace up Free Jack's sleeve is Rene Russo, who actually brings a ton of heart to her role as Estevez's lover, Julie, who's now had 17 years to mourn him and is now suddenly plunged into chaos. 
I watched you die. She thinks he's been dead for 17 years, only for him to emerge alive. And he's still this 20-something while she's kind of a more mature 40-something woman who's led a whole life. Fun and games. I didn't make any friends, but I made a deal. She's really terrific in this movie, and Anthony Hopkins is charming enough as her boss and romantic rival to Estevez that it's not beyond reason to think she might actually prefer old Tony Hopkins. Of course, the inevitable plot twist is pretty easy to predict, and it wasn't even hidden in the trailers. Welcome to my mind. Of course, there's Mick Jagger. While certainly Rusty is an actor, he brings a lot of presence to his role as the nominal antagonist who's hunting Estevez's for long and, in his own eyes, isn't such a bad guy at all. Feel free to make any arrangements you like, but keep your people out of my way. Some of his line readings are a bit off, but when Jagger's on screen, you just can't keep your eyes off of him. And he's always doing these kind of weird little things. In fact, there's an interview with Mick Jagger from the time where he talks about the fact that the character is constantly eating pan Indian leaves wrapped around condiments. And pan gives you kind of a little high, right? So he's kind of doing that the whole movie. And <laughs> I just find that such a rock star thing to do. Watch Free Jack and get a taste of what things might have been like had Mick Jagger decided to give up his life as a rock star to become an action hero. The show's not over yet. He's actually not a terrible action hero. I mean, he's cool looking, he has the leather jacket. People like him so much that, hey, they made him kind of the hero at the end of the movie because, you know, he's Mick Jagger. It's all tied together by a really good musical score by Trevor Jones. Although undoubtedly, some seams in the film are present as a result of all the reshooting, such as John Shee's character getting this big build up as this major badass kind of character that Rene Russo brings in, but then he just absolutely vanishes. Things have changed. There's people at the top, there's people at the bottom, and there's no one in between. And then there's also Grand L. Bush as the bodyguard Boone. We're trapped. What do you mean we, white man? <laughs> just kidding who carries around this badass sword in the movie, and you just expect him to go to town with that sword, right? But doesn't really do anything. He does run through a guy at one point, which is really cool, but why wasn't he one of the lead characters? I mean, if you're gonna have a bodyguard that has a sword, there's gotta be a sword fight at one point in the movie. I feel like his role, once upon a time, was bigger. And in fact, you've probably seen Grandel Bush in a lot of other movies from this era, including Die Hard and License to Kill. Why didn't that guy get more of a buildup? Just doesn't make any sense. Keep my grandma smiling. I will. That said, Free Jack has some really good action sequences, such as a big car chase halfway through the film, although there's a caveat here. You see, Emilio Estevez's character and Mick Jagger's character are talking via video screens the whole time, and Mick Jagger's line readings are terrible in this scene. I mean, he's, his acting is atrocious here. I don't know what was going on and why this wasn't reshot. He's just awful, but there it is. Hey, Verlon, it's Sendak. I hate to tell you this, but you're speeding. Where are we going? Suffice to say, Free Jack is certainly not a perfect movie. And you know, you could tell that the movie probably was shot and reshot and reshot again, but hey, for an early 90s action movie, I think it holds up pretty well. You got Emilio Estevez in the lead post Brat Pack just before Judgment Night and the Mighty Ducks, and I think he does a great job. You got Rene Russo just before she really broke out big time with Lethal Weapon 3, and you got Mick Jagger in his only big action role. Ah, man, I still would have loved to have seen Mick Jagger play like a badass cop or something in another action movie. Imagine a world where Steven Seagal was replaced by Mick Jagger. That's a world that I want to live in, but it didn't happen. Sometimes I wonder if the good Lord has forsaken us all to be letting this kind of shit go on. Free Jack to me is still a pretty good movie and you should check it out and it's streaming a lot of places. In fact, last I checked, you could see it for free on Tubi TV, albeit with a couple of ads. It's definitely something that you might wanna see. Oh, and for you 90s music fans, it also has a bitchin' theme song by Scorpions of all people. And I remember on the VHS copy of this movie, they played the whole music video before the film. So it was a video that I watched over and over again. It's kind of weird actually, because at the time Warner Brothers seemed like they must have had some kind of deal with Scorpions because they also did the theme song for the Steven Seagal movie On Deadly Ground, which came out a couple years later and just stunk up the box office. Yeah, it's the worst Steven Seagal movie ever, but hey, the theme song by Scorpions is pretty good. The Lord moves in mysterious ways. Alas, I digress. Free Jack, still a ton of fun, so check it out.